there's an outbreak, so we're going to be praying for that. But right now, before we start service, I'm going to read the scripture that Bert is going to use today. 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you, now, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you, Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house and your sons, with your sons, and shut the door behind you. Pour the olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it's filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing her jars, and she filled one after the other. Soon, every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now, sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. May it be the blessing of the Lord's word. Amen? Amen. Let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we once again are privileged to be in your presence. Amen. We're thankful that you have sent the Holy Spirit to touch our lives today. We ask a blessing on Bert. It's the last Sunday right now, and we just pray that his message will be what you need for each and every one of us today. Amen. Bless the reading of his word and the preaching. We pray for all those that have been affected by the COVID virus. We pray especially for the family in Kodiak, and the, apparently it's very harsh there. We just pray that you would touch lives, that you would let people know that you are in control, even over this horrible thing. You are still always in control. Trust and obey and have faith. We will do so in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask the blessing on this service now. Amen. Amen. How about y'all stand and let's sing <laughs> Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. Yeah. What, you wait for that? <laughs>
it will. Dissolve like snow. Get ready. So 
Pastor Danny and Connie, we extend our blessings. God of all my days. <laughs> Oh, 
today, can't we? Amen. We're going to slow it down and we're going to really listen to the voice of God as we sing an old Diva goodie. Softly and tenderly.
Good morning. Good morning. It's a delight that Diana and I have been privileged to be here. This is our fourth Sunday, and it has gone very, very quickly. It's because it was a real joy. And I thank Ruth Ann for leading the singing and doing so well at it. You know, she scared me. <laughs> she scared me like crazy. <laughs> you want to know why she scared me? I had to phone her, I think, three times. Three times I phoned her to South Dakota, right? And I'm pleading with her every time. Didn't you get it the first time? I cannot lead singing. <laughs> okay. Finally, Sam built me up. <laughs> okay. You want to thank him and never forget to thank him. And then I said, thank you, Lord, for that. However, we got a couple of more Sundays perking up here. What are we going to do? You won't have to leave, I promise. <laughs> well, that's good, but I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> okay? You knew all along, but I didn't know. Okay? Anyway, she bailed me out. Here we are. We had a good week. We had a great week. I think Diana and I are getting younger instead of older. You know why? We just got a one month old three pound poodle. <laughs> And now we got to look after that crazy thing. <laughs> well, it's keeping us going. Okay? I mean, I really mean it. It's keeping us alive. I don't know how well, but it's keeping us alive. The good part about all of this is you're going to pray for us, aren't you? I mean for the next probably three or four months looking after that little dog. <laughs> but we got another couple of weeks coming up here. However, you're go we're going to have to wait for a while. You see, it was all planned that way because we didn't want you to get over the entire of us. <laughs> right? So we'll be up for a couple of weeks. I think it's somewhere in September. My wife knows. You guys know. You see, I learned a long time ago, in a few months, two or three months or whatever, we will be celebrating our 50th anniversary. So I learned a long time ago. This is what the boss says, not what I think it is right. Okay? Anyhow, that's enough of this carry on. We need to get into the Word of God. Alright? The first thing before we get into the Word of God, we're going to pray. And we're going to pray because it's me speaking. It's God speaking through me, but He has made it very plain. You better pray. <laughs> okay, so let's pray. Once again, our Heavenly Father, what a delight it is to follow You. What a delight it is to look to You as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the very one that we were singing about today. 
We need to trust and obey. Yes. We need to look to you who are tender and compassionate and gracious yes. and understanding. Yes. And we need to ask you, please, open the word of God this morning. May you not hear Bert Lynn, but may you hear your son, Jesus, who died for us, who rose again, who has given us abundant life, who has given us the pleasure to trust and obey, for there is no other way but to follow Jesus and his truth. And it is in Jesus, your son, that we pray. And come quickly, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, I'm going to talk about faith this morning. Actually, I hope Jesus is going to talk about faith through us. We're going to talk about faith. Faith can sometimes scare us into seeing God more clearly. Lord, make my faith very clear and very understandable. We read the prophet Elisha was a type of a prophet, priest, and biblical professor to a number of students. One of his students had recently died. And he was presumably there on scene to comfort the wife or comfort the family during their time of bereavement. So one day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband, who served you, is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord. But now, you're less scary. But now, a predator has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. But I, you know, she got a hold of herself a little bit there. What can I do to help you, says the prophet, And so the prophet says this, tell me, what do you have in the house? Have you got anything of value maybe in the house, anything that God could use? Just tell me, will you, what you got in the house? Here's a point of interest. The prophet was probably surprised by the widow's response. I have nothing at all except a flask of olive oil. That's all I got left. Perhaps she and her husband now, I 
Chris had perhaps. She and her husband had been saving their pennies as starving students, and I know what that's all about. It's decades ago, but I know what that's all about. To purchase the precious oil for the consecration service of her student husband when he becomes a graduate priest in ministry. And soon she was going to be asked, you need to give that up too. Just think of that. I want to read you the significance of holy anointing oil to our text of 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7. The holy anointing oil, or oil of anointing, however you want to call it, formed an important part of ordination of the priesthood and the high priest as well as in the consecration of the articles of the tabernacle and we read that I'm not going to read it for you you can take it down and read it at your leisure Exodus chapter 30 and verse 26 They used this sacred oil to anoint the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, and the subsequent temple in Jerusalem. The primary purpose of anointing with the holy anointing oil was to sanctify, to set the anointed person or object apart as being holy. Exodus 30 verse 29 Consecration to them or consecrate them to make them absolutely holy after this. Whatever touches them will also become holy. Originally, the oil was used extensively for the priesthood and the tabernacle articles, but its use was later extended to include kings. And we read of that in 1 Samuel 10 and verse 11. It was forbidden to be used on an outsider, which is important here. Exodus 30, verse 32. And the Israelites were absolutely forbidden to duplicate anything like it for themselves. Exodus 30, verse 32 the second half of that verse. Having said that, let's now dig deep into the Word of God for some biblical understanding and practical faith lessons for you and for me, for all of us. I want you to consider, first of all, the widow was asked by the prophet, what can I do for you? Now that's important. Verse 1 and 2. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in your house? <coughs> Now I want you to notice a couple of things that are interesting to me. God is always there. Even when we're not aware 
of it. God answered through the prophet, I'm here and I can help you. I can help you through the prophet. Please, just tell me. Tell me how I can help you. I'm right here. I want to help you. Won't you let me? God is gracious, compassionate, understanding, loving. He is right in this room. With you, with me, with us. Here is a spiritual lesson today. God is saying to the widow, just reach out through faith. You, through the faith you have left at the moment. Now that is extremely important. Just reach out in faith with what you have left. Well, she tells the prophet, I have nothing, only the anointing oil. Well then, he says, let me have it. Remember, he is a representative of God. What God is saying, let me have what you have so I can help you. What a lesson. What a lesson. Even if it's damaged, hurting, not strong. Right now, I'm God and I'm here and I'm here for you. Just you. So you say, the guy next to us, the guy behind me in the seat, get a grip. What God is saying, I'm here for you. Let me worry about the fella or the gal that's beside you or behind you. I'm here for you. And I'm here for you right now. The widow's response is interesting. But, 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 <laughs> I work with a guy. We call him Mr. But. He was our machinist. I was an aircraft mechanic in Canada for a decade before God called me into the ministry. And so any parts we needed, we needed to go to the machinist. So we went to Mr. Buck and he said, oh sure, I'll do it for you. But, <laughs> but you're going to have to wait. Well, we can't wait. We got American Airlines out in the tarmac. But! So he got a nickname, Miss But. So the widow's response probably is, But, 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 but. All I have is the anointing oil. God's response by saying through the prophet, That's enough! That's all I need. Just reach out. Launch out. Take a faith jump. Jump out in faith. Don't worry, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to jump off there. <laughs> I might look stupid, but I'm not as stupid as I look. <laughs> but jump out. Take a faith jump, will you? Another spiritual lesson from the hand of God is very interesting. 
So I had to notice it. The widow's faith at this point of her life undoubtedly is shaken, wavering because of grief. But the prophet begins to get the widows to unburden her soul and she begins to talk to him. So she's, when the communication starts, the healing is started also with God. Faith begins to unwind from a pent up and burdened saint of God. The first step to recovery of, of her faith or anyone's faith is to talk. And she begins to talk. Spit it out there.
is happening. Look at what's happening, son. Look at what's happening, mom. What a lesson to learn. There are many lessons to learn, but we don't live in yesterday's faith. We must ask for new faith for today to carry us through tomorrow. And the response comes up. There aren't any more. Jars. There aren't any more jars to fill. You know something? Think of this. One faith lesson must build on the faith lesson of another in life. An illustration. It's called, you probably heard of it. It's called doubling each square. Extremely interesting. A few years ago, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago had a fascinating display. It showed a checkerboard with one grain of wheat on the first square, two on the second, four on the third, then 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Until they could no longer fit the seeds on the square. Then it asked this question. At this rate of doubling each successive square, how much would you have on the checkerboard <coughs> by the 64th square. Good question. <coughs> you could punch a button at the bottom of the display to find out. Now here's the answer. The answer, nine sex trillion million. Enough grain to cover the entire subcontinent of India 50 feet deep. That's incredible. Do you have what is known as a faith plan? Good question, do you? I don't want you to answer. I'm telling you something you already know. God even knows your thoughts. You don't have to talk. So he already knows what's up here. Or what you said. Or what you thought. Consider this. In your life. Review what you did right. Wrong strengths and weaknesses, etc. Renew or renew next. I can give up or go on. Third, recommit. Give your life to the Lord. Four, begin to redo, implement your plan, get started. The last one, 
believe the Lord can do it. And I'm going to let him do it. The widow's faith, you see, was rewarded through her belief system. While she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Oh! You don't want me to do that, sure. Yeah, but, 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 he's still around. <laughs> Come on, you don't want me to do that. I want you to notice something. For the widow lady, it's still faith versus works to her. She still had to sell all her anointing oil. Then her faith will be rewarded. But not until the widow lady does that first. Okay? <clears throat> Here's what you've been waiting on. The application. <laughs> Faith can be scary or spiritually rewarding, but you decide the outcome. Hebrews is very interesting. I know I got three quarters of a congregation that's theologically inclined. And I'm trying to be very careful. But remember, you've got to be grateful to me. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 5 to 8, it states this. I want to talk about money. Don't love money. Be satisfied <clears throat> with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. <clears throat> I will never abandon you. So, we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. But the widow lady right there, she didn't have anything. And her husband died. The rest of it goes on to say this, and it's very interesting. So I will have no fear what can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. And I love this. And we know it all. In a good way, not a know-it-all. You know it in a good way. Here's the end of what I want to say. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I want to give you an illustration. 
You see, even inventor, inventors like Thomas Edison, for instance, have to walk by faith. And some people, you have to kind of figure out well, what kind of faith are they walking on. That's another sin. So call another guy. Don't call me. <laughs> Here's Thomas Edison. He invented the microphone, the phonograph, and the incandescent light. Thank you that I can almost see here tonight. Today, this morning. The storage battery, talking movies, and more than 1,000 other things. December 1914, that's an interesting year and date for many, many reasons. We're not going to go into it. He had worked for 10 years on a storage battery. This had greatly strained all his finances. This particular evening, spontaneous combustion had broken out in the film room. I know it's Canadian. Fill in. If you don't like it, call another one. I happen to be Canadian American. I can't help it. Fill in. Okay? Within minutes, all the packing component, compound, the cellulose for records, and the film, there's another one, and the film, another flame of all goods were in flames. Fire companies from eight surrounding towns arrived, but the heat was so intense and the water pressure so low that the attempt to double the flames was, uh, and douse the flames, I should say, was useless. Everything was literally destroyed. And Edison was 67 years old. With all his assets going up in a swoosh, almost, although all the damage exceeded $2 million. Think of it, $2 million. Bucks. The buildings were only insured for because they were made of concrete and thought to be fireproof, would his spirit be broken?
can now live on what is left by faith. <clears throat> by faith. Whoa. Pretty interesting passage of Scripture. Well, that's it. Friendly. Friendly. I thought you guys loved me. <laughs> Father, what a lesson indeed it is. But the Lord, with every eye closed and everybody playing, if there is anyone here that is going through a hard time, a time where they cannot figure it out or do it in their own strength. Help them to remember that their faith and their strength and their comfort and their blessings can come from Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is known to be the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Who is known to be Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. And so if you are here today, and you are burdened down, and you know, and you know, there is no way I can go. I don't know what to do. Will you reach out? and accept Jesus. His loving arms are there. We sang, trust and obey, for there is no other way. So will you reach out and accept Jesus and His love and compassion and forgiveness? And then will you seek out somebody in this room, an elder, or a spiritual individual who has answers and encouragement to give you so that you can begin to grow in Jesus. So she went out and got rid of everything she had and she was told by the prophet, now you and your sons can live on what is left. Are you willing to do just that? Amen.